Hi, I'm Ed Kaminsky. I'm with Shorewood Realtors in Manhattan Beach, California. Also the owner of Sports Star Relocation, a company dedicated to relocating athletes throughout the country. My first experience as a home buyer uh, with with my first house was it was actually scary. It was in a market that was probably peaking, which I did not know at the time, and uh, it was we were squeezing in trying to save every dollar we could for our first down payment and it was uh, even though I was in real estate I was definitely very scared um, but we got the deal closed and ultimately that first experience ended up being a mistake because the market did crash and uh, we lost that particular home. We learned a lot from that first experience about really what to look for, where the market is, how to address affordability based on your financial situation and now we're able to really um, convey those same experiences we've had to a lot of our clients. You know, April 30th, 2010 is a, a very important date for first time home buyers because uh, the government has recently extended what's called the home buyer tax credit to home buyers if they purchase a home and are in transaction by April 30th. Ultimately, they will receive a $8,000 tax credit in 2010 if they close that home purchase. To, to further explain how a tax credit benefits a home buyer, this is ultimately actually better than receiving $8,000 in cash. If you were to earn $8,000 in your job, you would have to pay income tax on that $8,000. This is, in a sense, tax-free income that goes directly against your tax bill in 2010. First steps you want to do to be able to take advantage of the $8,000 credit right now is first of all, you want to identify number one, are you qualified to make a purchase by sitting down with a mortgage lender whether it's a, a major institution or a mortgage broker and really identify how much do you qualify to spend, number one. If you are in a position to purchase a home, that's always going to be your most important first step. Now there are rules in relationship to the credit as far as the amount of income that you make. So they have actually raised the level of income, I believe it's yes, yeah, $225,000 for a married couple or $125,000 if you are single. If you exceed that income, you may not qualify for the actual tax credit. A, a couple other professionals that you should seek out in this process, of course, is in, in making the real estate purchase, you, you definitely want to speak to a, a well-qualified real estate agent who can inform you of what prices are in the marketplace, what to expect in the offering process, the information you're going to need to be able to write an offer, uh, but also uh, you also want to speak to your accountant or your CPA in regards to your qualifying income and how it relates to that tax credit. You certainly don't want to go into this purchase assuming you're going to get an $8,000 credit and then you find out when you sit down with your accountant a year later that you did not qualify. So I would definitely recommend you speak to your accountant, your real estate agent, and a mortgage lender. Deciding between a condominium, a townhouse, or a single family home for a first time buyer, uh, you know, my recommendation between the three, again, is going to come down to affordability and your ability to maintain the property once you do own the property. For example, with a condominium, you have an association and a group of people that are organized to maintain the exterior of the property, deal with roof problems. Uh, maintenance issues, those type of things. So if you're extremely busy, don't have the time or the ability to want to deal with it, uh, condominiums are a great choice for buyers. If you are okay with dealing with the daily maintenance or monthly maintenance for a single family home, there's obviously large benefits of owning a house over a condo. You don't have rules and regulations, you can paint it any color you want, uh, it's, you know, it's, your, it's your personal home. Uh, but there's definitely more maintenance issues involved with owning a single family home. As a woman buying your first home, obviously you want to look at your basic 
you know, capabilities both financially and, you know, physically men or mentally of what you have to deal with in, in owning that home. Again, that kind of relates back to, you know, should you buy a condo or a house? Do you feel fairly handy and you can take on a, a few repairs here and there? Or do you actually have access to great services like a good handyman, a good plumber, a good electrician that can take care of those issues? Um, so a, a lot of that's going to be based on your, your time you have available. If you're working 12 hour days and then you're taking care of the kids for six hours a day and you sleep for six hours a day, there's no time left over, um, you've got to take that into account with, with any large purchase like this. How do you start looking for a home? Let's say you want to start really with just a basic cursory look. You know, your best bet, of course, is get on the internet and do a home search. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of sites that have ample amount of local inventory in your marketplace of every home that's for sale, the prices that they are. Uh, also, a lot of local realtors will offer um, certain web portals, as they call it, to access the MLS, what we call the MLS, which is the multiple listing service, uh, directly. So you can actually see the same homes that are for sale that real estate agents look at when they're in their offices.